Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Suraj Lumba. I'm uh, from Materials for Clean Energy and Environment Research Group at RMIT. The topic of my today's presentation is synthesis of scalable 2D materials for industrial scale electrochemical seawater splitting. So uh, excessive use of fossil fuels uh, ever since the industrial uh, revolution began, it has been uh, a detrimental impact on the environment and also depletion of these important resources. Uh, ever since the last few decades, the climate crisis have been getting bad and it's going to get worse for our future generations. It's not like we can make a mask for Earth like we used to wear during COVID or when we are sick, right? But so uh, we need to look for alternative sources of energy, renewable sources of energy like wind, uh, solar and tidal have been on the rise, but because of their intermittency, they cannot entirely replace fossil fuels. In recent years, hydrogen has been viewed as a potential replacement to fossil fuels. However, commercially about 96% of hydrogen is produced through burning of natural gas or syngas, and it has emissions, so it's not completely clean. And only 4% of hydrogen is produced by water electrolysis, and that has net zero emissions. Why? Because there are some challenges associated with water splitting. So first, water is a limited uh, resource, especially fresh water. It's about 3% of Earth's total water reserves. And considering the increasing demand of hydrogen, it is expected that 20 billion meter cube of water will be required every year to meet the increasing hydrogen demands, which can actually put about 80% of the world's population under threat of water scarcity. So we need to look for resources that can actually replace fresh water as well. There are other uh, disadvantages and challenges associated with fresh water, like the limited stabilities and working efficiencies of the currently commercial catalysts, like PTC or ruthenium or iridium uh, dioxide. So other than that, they're very expensive as well. And right now, if you need to produce hydrogen, the cost is about eight to $10 per kilogram of hydrogen. That's very high when you compare it with fossil fuels, which is around one to $2, maybe less per kilograms. Seawater, on the other hand, it's an abundant resource uh, and amounts to about 97% of uh, Earth's total water reserves. Uh, especially if you see from this map, a lot of countries around the world, they have pretty good access to seawater as well. And seawater also have uh, added advantage of tidal, solar or wind energy on shores, which can be used to produce energy to split water molecules. So basically no, uh, no, uh, no emissions from this whatsoever. However, there are challenges with seawater as well, obviously. Uh, so first is the presence of ionic salt and microorganisms, which can actually corrode the catalyst and electrolyzers that are being currently used. The biggest challenge is uh, chlorine evolution reaction, which is chlorine gas. Although chlorine is a value added product, but considering hydrogen demand is going to increase, about three to four times more chlorine will be produced, and then there will be an issue of disposal of chlorine gas as well. So another challenge. Uh, other than that, uh, so right now, a lot of players, very big industries uh, all around Australia, even all around the world, like Fortescue, Hisata, they are working on setting up uh, different plants, like pretreatment or desalination plants, so that, uh, they can uh, remove all any ionic salts or any chlorine uh, from the seawater. But not all small scale industries or new startups have that kind of money that uh, they can set up a new uh, desalination or pretreatment plants. So alternative sources need to be found. The next, uh, so what I have done is like our group, uh, we have worked on developing catalysts that can be used for seawater splitting. Other task is to develop electrolyzers as well, but my focus have mainly been on developing catalysts for seawater splitting. Throughout my uh, uh, PhD, I have developed catalysts for seawater splitting, and I have actually gotten a lot of uh, media attention, uh, thanks to RMIT. And we have been approached by uh, numerous industries to work on the commercialization of these technologies as well. And we hope that in coming years, we will be reaching the government target of $2 kilogram of hydrogen 
per kg, or sorry, $2 per kilogram of hydrogen. So next I'll take you through my research. So uh, I have used a very easy high temperature pressure synthesis route that's, that's called hydrothermal. So we have developed a material which looks like this, very thin, highly porous. So what it does is it helps in uh, enhancing the splitting of water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. As a result, a catalyst was able to uh, perform better than the commercial PTC catalyst in seawater and which was about twice uh, as better than uh, PTC. Uh, additionally, it was able to run for about 100 hours in alkaline seawater. PTC on the other hand can run about like three, four hours. So basically 10 times better perform uh, stability performance than PTC. Based on this, we employed it for full water splitting, using it as a full cell, both on cat cathodic and anodic side. And a catalyst performed better than the commercial PTC and iridium oxide catalyst. And when tested for stability, it ran for about 33 days without any performance degradation. So what we learned from this was, although our performance was really good, but when it came to industrial applications, we were still lagging behind. So we re realized that more focus needs to be on the anodic side, that's for uh, oxygen evolution reaction catalyst. So next we developed a uh, focus uh, uh, on developing catalysts for ampere level uh, chlorine-free anodic seawater reactions. Like I told you earlier, seawater competes with anodic oxygen evolution reaction. So catalyst has to be developed, which can perform at industrial scale, but can also avoid chlorine generation using seawater. So what we did was we took two different catalysts, which has two distinct advantages brought them together, grow one on top of the other, as you can see from figure B over there. S these two catalysts had unique properties, combining both their advantages and no uh, common disadvantages, and having strong bonding between them. As a result, the catalyst was able to achieve a current density of two ampere under a potential of two volt, which was 10 times better than iridium oxide catalyst. Interestingly, it's 65% cheaper as well. And when tested for stability, it was able to run continuously for 45 days without any uh, performance losses. We also did a stability test at a potential of, of at a current density of about 1.5 ampere. That's three times the current industry demands. And we uh, ran that for about four to five days without any current losses. So we also did another simulation testing over here. So like I uh, talked about uh, renew using renewable uh, resources for uh, energy generation. If you use renewable sources, they can be intermittent. And when you're in industrial applications, they can be shutdowns as well. So during that time, there might be instances that you might have to left the catalyst in seawater. And being seawater being corroded, if the potential is not being applied, it can foul the catalyst, even destroy it. So what we did was we left our catalyst that was run for... Uh, thousand hours in the setup for like five days and after that we restarted it again with 90 percent uh, current efficiency so although our per uh, catalyst performed exceptionally well we have to make sure that there was no chlorine generation so th these experiments were done to ensure that there was no chlorine gas generation or no hypochlorite as well in the seawater so we uh, we have successfully developed catalysts for oxygen evolution reaction at ampere level with current densities far greater than iridium oxide and have made sure that there was no chlorine evolution as well. So to summarize, uh, we have developed uh, catalysts for green hydrogen production uh, by direct sea water splitting. The ca our catalyst uh, for HER performed twice as better as PTC and for OER it was 10 times as better than iridium oxide and it's 65% more uh, economical than current commercially used catalyst. Well, uh, moving on towards industrial collaboration, there's already an ongoing pilot scale testing in India on one of my patented material. And uh, moving on towards the other patented technologies, RMIT is in talks with one of the Australian companies to set up a plant for commercialization. I think they are first planning to set up a pilot plant within RMIT and then move on from there after the pilot scale testing has been done. In the end, I would like to acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Nasir Mahmood, uh, and my research uh, group and colleagues. 
RMIT University facilities and Australian Synchrotron for all the help that I have gotten through my three, three and a half years of PhD. Thank you for listening.